morning and welcome to Faith and Healing School at Abundant Grace Church. With prayer, for the honor and the privilege of standing here and sharing your love, Father. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you. Have your way here. Speak through me the words that these people need to hear, Father. Let everybody come with expecting hearts, listening ears, and they will be met right at their point of need. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to open with our Ephesians and Colossians prayers. Set our foundation for our class. And throughout these prayers, we're asking for God to give us wisdom and knowledge, to give us understanding and insight. So it's important to, for these to be said, meet them from your heart. Because that shows that you're, you are expecting to hear from God when you're asking. And so we'll start with Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honor position, the one next to you, the Father on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all other names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Not only is that a good prayer, it's also a good confession to be making. We're going to talk about that today. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all of God's people, I will be able to understand how wide, long, high, deep your love is. Then I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this so that I may be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you, whose power is at work in me. By your power, you could do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. And glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 13. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so that I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you, Lord. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me by your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness and you have brought me into the kingdom of your son, whom you love. Hallelujah. Those are powerful, powerful words. Yesterday's and today's devotions that we uh, emailed and put on Facebook, they're run back to back. It's about the way you talk to yourself. The words are very powerful, whether they're coming from inside you or from the outside, from what people are saying to you or what you're telling yourself. 
Yesterday's devotion was called, You Can't Talk to Me That Way. And I'm sure that we've all said that to someone at some point in our life, at least one time. The words they were speaking to us were derogatory, disrespectful, and probably insulting. No one should allow anyone to talk to them that way. The reason so many people are in emotional trouble is that they talk to themselves disrespectfully, that they put themselves down. When we catch ourselves doing that, we need to stop and look in the mirror and say to ourselves, you can't talk to me that way. Remember, we're a spirit and we live in the body. It's our flesh that we have to keep put under, that we have to keep in subjection. It's our flesh. It's our body that's ruled by this world that's talking to us that way. It looks at things the way the world sees them and not the way God sees them as our spirit. So as a spirit, we must rise up in ourselves and tell ourselves, you can't talk to me that way. Ephesians 4.29, the Amplified Classic says, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. But only speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual, spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the need and the occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace, God's favor, to those who hear it. This doesn't always only pertain to other people. It pertains to yourself, too. You've got to look out for yourself. Don't talk to yourself disrespectfully. We have to be very careful how we talk to ourselves. It's very easy to be overly critical of ourselves and beat ourselves up emotionally and mentally. And that will destroy our lives physically and spiritually. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am a child of the Most High God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God's own handiwork. You can't talk to me like that anymore. Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. We hear consistently about what we say to others and how it affects them and how, it'll, how you speak to your children will affect their lives. Words carry with them power. Talking to yourself carries with it even greater power because it's you. There is nobody else that you put greater faith in their words than yourself. You know what you're saying. Other people may tell you things, and you could slough it off and say, ah, that's just them talking. But when you're telling yourself it, that's very personal down to home. You know everything about your situation. You know everything about yourself. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And when it pertains to yourself also, not just the people around you. In today's devotion, it was called, give yourself a good talking to. Not meaning thorough, but good in nature and quality. Let no foul or polluting language or evil or unwholesome or worthless talk ever come out of your mouth. Give yourself a good talking to. Words have power and they can either build up or tear down. They can strengthen our faith or cause it to falter. 24, hour day, at 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there is one person that we are always hearing, and that is our own self. We hear the words we speak to others about our health and our situations, and we hear our own thoughts. Make sure you're giving yourself a good talking to. It's vitally important that we are consistently feeding on God's word and specifically his, his promises. Because as the trials wear on us, whatever, if we, whatever we have been fed up is what we are going to hear coming out of our mouths and in our thoughts. The devil loves when Christians... When Christians aren't vigilant, when they get slack when it comes to reading the Bible. Because that's when, he's easy, when it's easy for him to plant seeds of fear and doubt and discouragement. He plants those little seeds, and pretty soon, 
That's what you're telling yourself. That's what you're talking about. That's what you're thinking. Unless you're f- full of the word, unless you keep filling yourself up with the word to counteract his distractions, his fear, doubt, and discouragement. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. This is Amplified Classic. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests made with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God, and God's peace shall be yours. That tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so, fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly earthly lot of whatever sort it is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The words we speak and think are first formed in our hearts and minds. And that says God's peace will be a fortress around our hearts and minds as we diligently seek him. So if his peace, God's very own peace, is guarding your heart, guarding your mind, and keeping you from talking bad to yourself, from having those thoughts, that discouragement, that doubt. Study God's word and give yourself a good talking to. Speak positive things over yourself in your life. Not just when you're talking to others, but when you're by yourself. Jude chapter, well, it's only one chapter. Jude, verse 20. But you, beloved, build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith. Continually progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher. Build yourselves up. Not just, it doesn't stop there. It says, on the foundation of your holy faith. The word tells us how do we get faith by hearing God's word. So we have to continually be putting God's word in. We have to be speaking it out so we can hear it. And we'll be building ourselves up higher and higher each time we do it. Stronger and stronger. James 4, 7, therefore submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God in your words, your actions, what you're doing, reading his word. You can't submit to God if you don't know what he wants you to be doing. It's all in his word, how you're supposed to behave, how you're supposed to think, the way you're supposed to be talking. You submit your life to God in those ways, and it'll be easy to resist the devil. You'll catch him when, he's, when that small seed of doubt comes, when that little piece of fear when that little bit of discouragement he's trying to plant in you, you can resist immediately. First Samuel 30, verse 6. David was greatly distressed, for the men spoke of stoning him, because the souls of them all were bitterly grieved, each man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged and strengthen himself in the Lord, his God. That's a pretty distressful situation he's in there. His own people wanted to stone him. I don't think too many of us are facing a situation like that today where our family wants to kill us with rocks. He faced in that situation... He encouraged himself in the Lord because of the scriptures he knew, because of the word of God that was in him. He was able to do that. Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong, vigorous, and very courageous. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. We have to continually encourage ourselves with scripture like that, with word like that. 
God wouldn't tell us to be strong and courageous and vigorous if we didn't have the ability to do it. He doesn't tell us to do things we can't do. And right in that one verse, he tells us to be strong and very courageous, and then he tells us why we could be that way. He says, don't be afraid or dismayed because I go with you wherever you go. Tell yourself that. God goes with me wherever I go, whatever I'm doing. God is with me. I'm a child of the Most High God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Encourage ourselves. It's good to have good Christian friends and fellowship, but they're not with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You have to stand your ground by yourself. You have to build yourself up because it's when you're by yourself that the devil can mess with you. That's when he causes fear and depression to come on you. And when those come on, you don't want to be around other people. And that's another, another roadblock he's throwing out there. That's what he wants. He wants you to separate yourself, to be alone with your own thoughts and, and get slack in the word. Because he knows that's when you'll be talking to yourself with fear and discouragement. You have to encourage yourself. Don't let the devil have a crack in the door to, to slip in. Resist him. Psalm 23, verse 4 in the Amplified Classic says, Yes, though I walk through the deep, sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide me. They comfort me. Those are the words you'd be telling yourself. Good, give yourself a good talking to. Confess those. Put it to work in your life. I'm a child of God. I will fear or dread no evil. We have God's rod of protection and his staff to guide us, to nudge us along the path that we need to stay on. Nobody's going to do these things for us. Second Corinthians 10, 5, the Amplified Classic. Inasmuch as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of of Christ the Messiah, the anointed one. That's our job, to do that for ourselves. Casting down imaginations, another version says. Where do you think those imaginations are coming from? It's coming from whatever you put inside you or allow in. If you're not filling up on the word, if you fill up on the word, you start imagining that those things come to fruition in your life, that God will meet all your needs, that by his stripes I am healed. Those are the kind of imaginations you can take in and build up because it confirms the truth of God's word. They are imaginations that are in obedience to Christ, the Messiah. It's the little fear, the little doubt, the little discouragement that the devil tries to throw in that we must refute because they try to set themselves up against the true knowledge of God. And we prayed to have that knowledge. We prayed for those in our prayers this morning. Deuteronomy 31, verse 6. Be strong, courageous, and firm. Fear not, nor be in terror before them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail. 
He will not fail you or forsake you. This is the word you need to get in you. Because that's the stuff that you'll be telling yourself when trouble comes. When you get a, a notice in the mail. When your car is making a funny noise. When your body's making a funny noise. Stand on those words. Not all these commercials we see for everything that can go wrong with you that they got a pill for all the time. Do you have this fake? Do you have that pain? Oh, yeah, I got, I got, I must have with that thing they're saying. No. Cast down that stuff. That's not the truth. This is the truth. The truth is you are healed. Those are imaginations that contradict God's word. It's our job to encourage ourselves, to give ourselves a good talking to, and, and strike those down. Romans 15, 13, Amplified Classic. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Let that sink in. Abound and overflowing with hope. There's no fear, no doubt, no discouragement. There's no room for any of that. If you're standing on that scripture, if you're telling yourself that, I'm filled with joy and peace because I believe God. Through the experience of your faith, based on the faith that you used for things in the past that came to fruition, the things that manifest. You know God's going to keep working in your life. He doesn't take a break. It's not a hit or miss situation. Second Timothy 1.7, Amplified Classic. For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving, of cringing and fawning fear. But he has given us a spirit of power and love and of a calm, well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Stand in front of the mirror and look yourself in the eye and tell yourself that. God didn't give me fear. It's not from God. God has given me spirit of power and love and of calm, well-balanced mind and self-control and discipline. That's what God gave me. The devil will put the, try to put the other stuff on you, cowardice and fear. That's not from God. You don't have to accept that. I'm going to take a minute right here. This is a good time. If you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, the devil can put that stuff on you because you don't have the authority to stop him. If you've got a spirit of fear and you want it to go, you have to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And then you will have the authority to use his name to stand up to the devil and tell him to go. Just like that scripture he read, submit to God. Submit to God by giving your heart to the Lord. It's not a long, drawn-out process. It's simple. You ask for forgiveness for the sins that you can't erase. God takes care of it. It's done. And then you confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, that you believe he's the Son of God, that he came here to earth, that he was crucified and died for your sins and sickness and disease and every bad thing. He took that on himself for you. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. If you just prayed that, let us know. Email us at 
comment on the feed. And now you can stand in the mirror and you could say, I am a child of God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your spirit has just been renewed. And you have authority to resist the devil and anything he was trying to put on you. And you could tell yourself, God has not given me a spirit of fear. He's given me a spirit of power and of love and a calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. That belongs to you. Tell yourself that. If you have to, tell it to yourself all day long until it starts sinking in. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, also amplified. Be alert and on your guard. Stand firm in your faith, your conviction, respecting man's relationship to God and divine things, keeping the trust and holy fervor born of faith and a part of it. Act like men and be courageous and grow in strength. It's our job to do. You have to watch out for yourself. We're not little babies, not little children where our parents guard us from everything. The thought just came in my mind when somebody's saying something and the parents cover their children's ears. Why? Because words have an effect. They don't want to hear it, the, the kids to hear that. Bad words or violence. Nastiness. It affects the children inside. And then that's going to come out of them. God tells us, be alert and on your guard. Sometimes you got to cover your ears. Cut people off when they start talking. If you don't want to hear it, it's, you know it's something you don't want to hear. Say, whoa, stop right there. Cut them off. You don't want that little seed to get in you. Be alert and on your guard. Be courageous and grow in strength. Romans 15, 4. For whatever was thus written in former days was written for our instruction, that by our steadfast and patient endurance, and the encouragement drawn from the scriptures, we might hold fast to and cherish hope. Where is it? From the scriptures, from God's word. That's where we're getting encouragement, endurance, patient, patience, steadfastness. By consistently feeding on God's word, putting that in. So when we start to get derogatory thoughts about ourselves, start to tell ourselves things that don't line up with the word, we, catch our, we can catch it right away. We're like, well, that's not what God said. That's not what God told me. As much as we trust our own words, we have to counteract them with, that's not what God told me. God said, he's going to satisfy me with a long life. God said, he sent his word and healed me. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3, Amplified Classic. Therefore, then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, unnecessary weight, that sin which so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings to and entangles us. Let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. 
looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. Cast off every weight, every encumbrance. Who's going to do that for you? Nobody else. You have to do it. Nobody can remove the weights of the past except you. If you're asking for forgiveness, God already released it to be removed from you. If it's still there, the only reason it's there is because you're holding on to it. Cast it off. Because the devil's using it to cleverly cling to and entangle you in fear and discouragement and doubt. Jesus, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, that's us, our souls, our spirit, we are his prize, endured the cross, despising it and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself. Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may now not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your minds. Those last words are the exact opposite of encouraging yourself. You have to think of what Jesus did so that you don't grow weary or exhausted, losing heart, relaxing and fainting in your minds. You have to stay alert and on guard Romans 8, 31, what shall we say to all this? Sometimes our trials are all this. Lots of little things, lots of big things sometimes that we're facing. What shall we say to all this? This is what you say. If God is for me, who can be against me? Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Give yourself a good talking to. Tell yourself that. I'm a child of God. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. If God is for us, who can be against us? God is for me. Nobody can stand against me. Nobody is more powerful than God. Nothing stands in God's way. but be it done to you according to your faith. It's never God's ability. It's always our faith. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Give yourself a good talking to. That's what it's talking about. Don't let your head talk to you in a discouraging way. Don't let your head be disrespectful to this body that belongs to God. We'll close with this scripture, Philippians 4.13, Amplified Classic, to give yourself a good talking to. Go through and find scriptures and put them in the first person. Make them personal. Put your name in there. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Not in yourself. Submit to God. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Amen. 
I have strength for all things. In Christ, if you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you are in Christ. You have the right to declare these scriptures over you. I have strength for all things. All means all. To get through physical, financial, emotional, mental, relational. At work, whatever the problems are, whatever the trials are, whatever you're facing. Remember, if you're a child of God, God is for you. Nobody can stand against God. The void that was this universe of space had to yield to God's voice when he created everything. He spoke, and the darkness yielded. There was light. He spoke, and the planets were all formed. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him. Don't forget to include him in all your confessions. Because without Christ, you're just a mere spirit in a fleshly body. It's with him, through him, and in him that you're ready for anything equal to anything. He infuses me with inner strength. And I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Give yourself a good talking to. You could sing it to yourself. There's so many good songs out there. If you pay attention to the lyrics, you're singing strength to yourself, encouraging yourself. Those Christian songs are built on verses of Scripture. A lot of them God-inspired Scripture. Put it in these people's hearts to get it out there so you could sing those over and over again and keep building yourself up. You can't listen to two things at the same time and get everything out of it. So if you're listening to the music and you're singing along, the devil can't stick in his fear and doubt and discouragement. There's no room for it. You can't hear it. Sing loud. Praise the Lord. God's got something good for you every day. This is the day the Lord has made. Every morning is this day. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He's got good stuff for you every day. Give yourself a good talking to. If you catch yourself being derogatory and disrespectful, look in the mirror and tell yourself. It's not crazy to do that. You got to talk to yourself. Nobody else is going to keep you in line. A lot of people are very stubborn. They don't take any words from anybody else. They won't take advice. They do whatever they want. Use that to your benefit. Tell yourself, you won't talk to me like that. I'm a child of God. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything, equal to anything, through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient. In Christ's sufficiency. Thank you, Father God, for this time we had together. I thank you for the love we experienced through your word. That You love us so much that you want to empower us like that. 
ready for anything, equal to anything through your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father, that your words are going out and they won't return void, that they're going to accomplish what you set them out to do, Father, to build people up, to put them over, to get people saved and bring them into the kingdom so they can experience all your blessings. I thank you for your love, Lord. I ask you to bless everybody that's here in this, Father. Let them receive it, Father, in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.